Hey guys, so I'm just gonna do a quick video showing you on my iPad. Um, hopefully this will help you. I think there were many people who, um, you know, they, I guess the order of what I was seeing, um, you know, made a lot of sense to them, but they don't know how to find, like, so if I said, for example, um, when is Tishri 14, they weren't able to, um, they, they, they don't know how to, like, find that out, or also um, the beginning of the year. So I thought I would just, like, talk about um, how I do that and just some basics. And I really recommend you to get Stellarium and just try it out yourself, because I really want people to be able to um, figure it out th themselves. I think it's really useful. And, um, and, you know, the reason why I'm, like, considering this is so important is because this is, like, the root of you know, so many other things, I mean, you know, to find out when is the first month, to find out um, when feasts would be, like, I'm not an expert on when feasts are exactly, um, but, you know, if you did, you know, if you read in the Word and it shows where God um, says, you know, on what exact date to celebrate a certain feast, you'd be able to find it um, a lot better if you know the proper method and, and how to actually read the celestial time clock. So I'll try to show you um, the quick, easy way to find out when is the first month by using the vernal equinox. And then after that, I can show you um, how to find the months um, without using the vernal equinox. Um, and also, because, uh, you know, it would be in real life if they were looking at the stars, it would just be really inconvenient to always be um, always looking for the vernal equinox, so, um, and counting from there, so I'll show you how to do that without the, um, without the vernal equinox, and also I'll show you how to find out what age it is, what age we're in, and also how to find out the ver vernal equinox, the summer solstice, the winter solstice, and the fall equinox without, uh, googling it. You're, you're actually able to find out all these things, and you're also able to find out what is true midnight, and all these like very important things um, without using Google, without using anything but Stellarium. So um, it might get a little complicated, but please bear with me and ask any questions in the comments if you are not understanding. Okay, so this is the quick and easy way. We know it's the vernal equinox by just Googling. It's March 22nd. And you can see that the sun is at the north line. Um, I always, so like I said in my previous videos, um, I always look at just what is midnight to us. Not This is not true midnight, but it's just midnight, um, the quick and easy way. And this is the best time to observe the clock. Um, so like I said before, like if you consider this clock as being an analog, you know, two-dimensional flat analog, analog clock, it's not really going to make sense. So you have to understand it's a multi-dimensional clock. It would be like the equivalent of taking, you know, multiple of this, 2d clock and kind of spreading them out in you know multiple planes on multiple fixed planes and then pressing play and each each plane each um clock face would turn and and uh, it would you know turn in a different way and then you would read the time in that way so that's exactly what you know something being multi multi-dimensional is right it's on different planes and happening on those multi-planes so yeah, if you just if you consider it 2D, it's it's really not going to work that way. So um, that's why, you know, the other clocks are not really um, going to tell you the time. But anyway, so we'll just look at it. The best way to look is at, at midnight. That's when um, people can see the stars. I think that's why God made it that way. Um, so at the north, you would see the sun. And as you go along the year, the sun would make a figure eight in the sky at this exact time. And by the way, my location is in Jerusalem, so that will really help you. Um, if it's looking different, that means you're just not in Jerusalem. So I go to the south and I'm going to go up. And this is where the constellation will always show up. The start of the constellation, usually this is not a perfect thing, but it's just helping you look to see where the constellation is. It's always up at midnight in Jerusalem in the right month. And it will start coming into the south line. The south line okay so make sure your grid line is on and as the month goes by it'll just move right okay and so you'll see the full moon come into the constellation so we see 
the full moon is at spica so this is just highlighting that this is indeed the first month um and you can look into that more dr barry ah talks about that and as you see the constellation is about in the middle ish it's not always accurate but that's just helps you it's really showing you like this is indeed the first month okay and then as you go along the next month the next constellation will come and that would be the scales so you just go along and you'd see the the full moon comes in and it highlights the constellation and we're still at the you know it's right there at the south line and we're still at midnight it changes you know due to the um the equinoxes but it's it's fine it's around the same time so it's around the midnight time so that's highlighting the second month. And then we have, this is a little bit of a small constellation. So maybe it would go back a day-ish. So that would be highlighting the third month, which, which is uh, Ophicus slash the scorpion. You can see Ophicus there, the scorpion. I think Aquila is right somewhere down here. Where's Aquila? Uh, you'll, you'll have to, I don't want to get this too long, but basically it's the eagle, but it's commonly known as, known as the scorpion. So that'll be the third month. And here's coming into the next month. There's the full moon highlighting. So I want to, I want to um, emphasize, this is not telling you the start of the month. This is just simply telling you which constellation, which month it is by the full moon. The full moon would fall in the exact middle. Okay, so it's just the easiest way to see. So if you want to know when the first, um, for exact like first day is, well, what you should be doing is observing and seeing the um, the first crescent, which you would see pretty much like the day after the new moon. But um, I'm just going to show you on Stellarium. You're just going to center on the moon, and you you know this is the middle of the month. This is the middle of the month, um, it's not Sagittarius, it would be the fourth month, right? But you're going to go back to when the moon is new, okay? If you want to find out the beginning of the fourth month. So as you can see, the moon is new here. So this would be the beginning. It's just, it's, it's, it's a little harder that way, but... Um, that's why I just, this is why I'm talking about the full moon, because it's just the, it's the fastest and easiest way to understand what is the right month, okay? So I'm going to just keep going forward. Um, oopsie. I'm going to unlock it. Just keep going forward. And so the fifth month would be Capricorn. Um... And on the Maseroth, and as you see, the full moon is in it, and you just you can continue on doing this. So if I wanna, um, if I wanna find out, you know, there's a six month. If I wanna find out what is Tishri, the seventh, the seventh month month is Tishri. So I'm just gonna see like when is. So you have to go up a little bit, but okay, there you go. So you got the seven month, and that's Tishri. And you see the full moon is in Pisces, and Pisces is a seven. Like I've said before, that, you know, represents Jesus. You can even see it kind of looks like a seven um, backwards, though, but it's still a seven, um, or even upside down. So, and, and so, yeah, that's how you find out the quick and easy way of what month it is. And so finding out the true midnight, I, I covered that in my um, has the midnight hour gone out yet? Um video and so I don't want to cover that again because this video will just get too long so I'm going to show you how to find out when the vernal equinox the summer solstice and uh, the winter solstice and the fall equinox is um so you don't you know so hypothetically you wouldn't have to google it if google didn't exist um and you would be able to do this in real life um I'm just going to show you at the midnight hour because it's easier but it, it, you can literally find you can do this at any hour of the day you um as long as you can see the sun in the sky, you would just track it over the course of a year and it would make a figure eight. Um, and it is 
complicated and you start having to use math uh but this is why they would call them wise men in the old days when they would um do all these things because it was just it was very complicated and you have to have a bit of an understanding of physics and math and just stuff and so hopefully um you'll be able to understand what i'm saying but uh even for me guys like i literally like god showed me this like i it's very you know it's i know i know a fraction a fraction of what i'm sure god has in the heavens so um let's show i'll do it um by month so as you can see if i'm just going by month you can see the like unfortunately on stellarium the sun is huge but so it's harder to see but it is making a figure eight So I hope by now you're seeing like how this is a multi-dimensional clock because you're not going just by day by day by day or by minute by minute by minute or hour or even um even by a month like I mean right now I'm showing you by month but even I'll show you by year what happens um and how we read the ages through the years um but you can see it's multi-dimensional if you just if you just regard only one of them then you're going to get the incorrect clock and it's going to you know you think you're telling the time it's not telling the time properly it's not accurate so it's you have to think about it being multi-dimensional so as so I'm going to explain this I'm not going to show you it because it's really you have to use math and stuff but basically just say that the sun will do an 8 like this so to find out uh this the summer and the winter solstice you're going to be looking at when the moon, uh, sorry, when the sun is at its highest peak on the 8, the very, very highest to the day and the very, very lowest to the day. And this, the middle of the figure 8 where it joins would be slightly above the middle between the two. So the top circle, circle is sh shorter than the bottom circle, right? And so that's why the vernal equinox and the fall equinox would not fall right where the eight would meet. It would not fall there because it's not in the middle. The vernal equinox and the fall equinox, you would calculate by finding the exact day that the sun is at the highest and the exact day that the sun is at the lowest and finding the middle day. All right, so it's it's um it's gonna basically it will show you basically it's showing you when the sun is shining on the earth perfectly half 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 right and because the the moon because the um earth is tilted slightly um the the day that it would meet <laughs> that that exact day where it would it would um conjoin there is the day when it, it's still tilted so if you want to find the perfect half half yeah you would need to calculate between those two days so that's how you could calculate the vernal equinox and i really hope that makes sense i if i try to do that in this video it'll just be like very very complicated so um that's how you could find out the vernal equinox uh without looking on google so let me just i'll just show you a really quick and messy version um it's not accurate to the day it's just i'm gonna just give you a kind of visual idea of what i'm trying to talk about you can calculate this to the exact day but i i'm just gonna kind of show you so um so i'm gonna go forward and see the sun oh it see it goes down but if if you go like this you can see right you can see that this is the highest point that it would be in this so the um so the summer solstice would be around this time so even if you go back a bit you can see it's arching very slowly very slowly and so you're just looking for it's around here i'm sorry it's around here ish um i don't know the exact day i'm sorry but um you'd have to just zoom in and really look at what where the very upper area is and so just say it's around here okay so this would be around the summer solstice and then we would go let's go backwards to when the uh, sun is at the lowest point so remember this is all at the same exact time you cannot change that time at all otherwise you will not understand um it will give you the wrong answer so we can say about there and then we can kind of do the days to get a more fine tuning uh 
so let's just say here-ish. So I think I think it's actually um, the 24th. But anyway, it's around here. And so so you got the 6, 22, 23 around there, and the 12, 24 um, before that. And so you would just calcul calculate the middle day. And that would be, um, you could calculate the vernal equinox and the fall equinox from there. So I hope that helps you. This would be the winter solstice. Um, so I really hope that helps you uh, understand how to um, calculate the vernal equinox without uh, using um, Google. And so that would, the vernal, knowing the vernal equinox helps you because then you're able to um, know when around the first month would be. So it would always be around the same time. Um, that's when, um, the, you know, that's when uh, it would be Virgo. So we're going to go look at the south, south line, like I said before. We're going to go look up, and there we're going to see Virgo there. So that it always makes sense. It always comes together like that. It's like clockwork. Um, I know it's very complicated, but this is, this is the truth, is that the clock is not a simple 2D uh, analog, right? So I'm hoping this is helping. And so let me show you how to find out um, what age it would be what age it would be. So basically the easy way is to know when the vernal equinox is. Um, the sun is always in the constellation of the age. Okay, so the sun would be in Pisces. And so what will happen um, as you go through the years, and I can show you, is the sun will move slowly through this constellation. And so it moved from, oh, sorry, um, the, it, this way. <laughs> It moved from Aries, which is the ram, back in Abraham's day, okay? In Abraham's day. This is why I was saying, like, why um, did uh, Abraham sacrifice not a lamb, but a ram, okay? So that was the age of Aries, and now we're in the age of Pisces, and the sun comes through here. God is showing you the age, guys. God is showing you the age, and then it will go into the age of Aquarius. So why do you think that new age people, like all these godless people, are obsessed with Aquarius, the, the age of Aquarius, the golden age that they're looking for, they're obsessed with it because that's the next age to come. And people always argue, when is the age? When is the age? The age is here. The age is when the sun, where the sun is and the vernal equinox. So I'll show you over the years. So this is why I'm saying we go through the days to learn one thing. We go through the months to learn one thing. Like I said, showed you to find the um, true midnight. We go through the, the minutes. And then now we're going through the years. So this is why it's a multi-dimensional clock, guys. Okay, it's not a 2D analog. Okay, so let's go. It's very slow. And this is why ages are very, they're thousands of years, thousands of years. Okay, so the, it, I don't know if you can tell, but the sun is slowly moving, very slowly moving. Let's go to like 3,000. See, we're getting into Aquarius. I mean, if you want to talk about all the lines, the grid lines, we can say, you know, according to the grid lines, we're already in Aquarius, but I don't really consider the grid lines um, with 100%, you know, I, you know, certainty. I just kind of, like, consider them sometimes. I think they can be interesting. But in general, like, I would say if you are looking here without the grid lines, Without when I say grid lines, I'm talking about of the constellations, not not the um, degrees. These are degrees, right? Um, it's not showing up. I guess I don't have it selected. But the point is, is if you were if you're an ancient person, you're looking at the stars and the heavens, and you're watching the sun. You like I wouldn't really necessarily consider that. This is kind of like a gray area. This is a gray area. I would consider the age starting when the sun is really in there, right? So maybe we'll go forward like a. Um, Let's go forward like 300 years, okay? So 300 years later, you know, you see the sun's really in the water. And so this is why I'm saying it's important about the um, the order as well, because Aries is 8, Pisces is 7, and Aquarius is 6. And so you know the beast system is 666, guys. It's the man without God. Okay, and so this is why they talk about the Aquarius age, the, the Aquarian age, the golden age, um, 
they're looking for this age, this age of knowledge and surpassing um, like the next level of humanity. You know, where are we going to go? You know, this knowledge, this, it's Gnosticism. Gnosticism at its core, it's exactly what the snake told man in the garden. Okay? It's just rewrapped all fancy and all, you know, technologically advanced. And so there's a reason why it, it coincides with the 666. And so that's what I'm saying is like they'll get their age. And this is why um, another reason why I really believe that it says in the Bible, the heavens and the earth will pass away because all these things are written in, written in the stars. Like we have Nimrod with Orion and all this stuff like that. Even God himself has acknowledged in Job. And I don't think God wants like forever of us to be in the stars. Like he's going to have a new thing, a new thing. He says, behold, I'm doing a new thing, right? So it's going to be new in all ways. But anyway, so... Um, so as we see, this would be around, you know, kind of when the golden age would, their golden age would be, but their golden age is really the lake of fire. Um, and so, like I said, the sun, um, when it's on the constellation, it's representing like, what is the sacrifice? Like what's burning, right? So the sun was on Aries. Um, that was what God had put on um what he commanded Abraham to put on the altar, and they it was a burnt offering. It was a burnt. It was it was it was burnt, right? It was sacrificed um, for the sins. And then next in the age of Pisces, we have Jesus who's sacrificed with the sun burning on um, the fish. You know, Jesus is represented by fish, and he was the sacrifice for us. And but then, like here's the thing: is that when you don't have God and you're man without God, you're you know six 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 and whatever. You're looking for this golden age. You're you become the sacrifice. You're I mean it's not really a sacrifice in the end. Like you are bearing the brunt of your own sins. And you, if you don't have God, you know you're in the lake of fire, which is a burning. So if that's uh, it's hard to just you know I'm not the best at describing things, but um. I did cover that in other videos, but hopefully that helps you. That's how you find out what age it's in. The uh, Sorry, what age we are in. So I'm going to go back to when people suppose um, Abraham was um, alive. Oh, I wasn't recording. Oopsie. So yeah, as you can see, um, the sun is in Aries. So as you can see, we can... Um, this is what people suppose the time uh, Abraham was alive. Um, it's coinciding with the time now. So I just, you know, I don't, I'm not looking at the specifics, but it, this goes so slowly, it's around the time anyways. And so you can see the sun at the vernal equinox is in Aries. Um, so yeah, so you can find out the age and hopefully that helps. And I think I'll just quickly cover how to find out true midnight one more time. Um, and then all points should be covered and you should be able to just um, watch this and then fiddle around with it yourself and you'll be able to get an idea better when you are able to actually play it out on your own okay my boy's getting um, impatient and he's about to really start crying so um so you look at the north line and you're gonna go down and you'll see the sun and i'll just zoom in and remember where the north line is it's right there it's gonna more might come up but uh, there we go okay so and then we're just going to, what we want to do is get the sun to be right on the north line, okay? So we're going to, so this is how I found out about when is true midnight and how true midnight is February 15. So this is why it's really good to have this calendar or this, uh, sorry, this clock because this is not the calendar, sorry. This is the clock to tell when the, like, to tell, to help to you tell the calendar, um, because it's like the root, it's the root of everything, so it's, helps you to figure all these things out, um, and, uh, once you get a grasp of it, it's easy, so, so it looks like here, around here is the, um, true midnight, and I'll just go by seconds, and we're zoomed in, I mean, this is, this was like very, very accurate. Um, <laughs> you can do this with any day, any day. Um, like I said, the the, uh, the sun does a, an eight, so it might be over here and you might have to bring it, or it might be here and you have to bring it back. So, um, but the Truman night would end, would always end up being somewhere between 11.30 and 1.30, like in between that time period. It varies and it changes every night, so. This would be here. And that's how you figure out the true midnight. 
that would be it right there. And as you can see, it's on the north line. And just for fun, you know, what month is this? We're going to look at the south line, and we're going to look up and we'll see Virgo. So that is the first month. Um, I think it's not quite yet because the moon... I don't, the, I don't know if it's exactly the new moon, but anyway. It is about to be um, Nissan, which is the first month for a go, okay? So any questions, let me know in the comments, and um, I will do my best to answer them. But God's heavens are pretty amazing. I'm just blown away. Um, he's not so simple like a, just a 2D flat clock. He's, I mean, look at this. It's the globe. It's inc It's you have the plane of the... So the Maseroth, you know, some people are wondering, like, what is the Maseroth? It's just simply meaning, like, the plane of where everything travels around, right? And it it's just... It's all... You can observe it all differently from... It's almost like seeing something, like an some of those artworks that if you look at it from one direction, it looks like one picture, and you look at it from another direction, it's another picture. So that is what I mean when I say it's multidimensional, um, the perspective ch totally changes if you, uh, change, you know, w like how you're going along. And I'm sure I only know a little bit. So if you guys play around with it and you start to understand and you even start to think, see new things that I have not known, then please let me know. I would love to know. I'm sure if I looked at it at a different time than true midnight, maybe I'll start seeing some really cool stuff. So let me know in the comments. I love you all and God bless each and every one of you.